spring is in the air. Time to get out and exercise and work on this gut. Hey there, Steve here. Today, we're gonna check out the Fitbit Ulta. Are you ready? Come on. Even though I'm a big fan of technology, I'm not one to jump in the bandwagon for the latest thing to hit the streets. And the trend in fitness trackers has been no exception. Well, now that they've been out for a while, I decided to go ahead and take the plunge. So, I found one second hand, in this case, a Fitbit Ulta and I've been trying it out for the last couple of months. The idea of wearable devices for measuring fitness activities is not a new concept. Some of you may harken back to the 80s and 90s when the simple pedometer was all the rage. But did you know the pedometer actually dates all the way back to the 1700s? In 1780, Swiss inventor Abraham Louis Perillet created the first pedometer based on a mechanism he developed 10 years earlier to power a self-winding watch. The device utilized an oscillating weight to move a system of gears that was used for measuring steps and distance while walking. Fast forward 200 years and we begin seeing the pedometer enter the mainstream. Devices of the 80s came in two flavors, digital and mechanical. Typically worn on the belt and kept on throughout the day, its sole use was to record how many steps the wearer had walked, and in some cases, it could even calculate the distance in kilometers or miles. So, how do today's modern trackers differ from earlier pedometers? Well, since the 90s, they've become a lot more accurate for one thing, but just how much is dependent upon the type of device and where it's worn, which leads us to today's Fitbit Alta, a tracking device that's worn on the wrist. You may be asking why I'm not reviewing the new Alta HR, and the answer comes down to two main reasons. One, while the technology is getting better, the verdict is still out on the accuracy of consumer HR monitors. In fact, a recent study presented at the American College of Cardiology's annual scientific session revealed that these devices can equally over and underestimate heart rate by as much as plus or minus 34 beats per minute, depending on the type of activity. The second reason is that, other than the new wristband and HR monitor, the two devices are virtually identical. And besides, I already have a couple of devices that measure heart rate. The key difference between yesterday's pedometers and today's fitness trackers is in the UI and how we interact with them. Instead of simply displaying raw data, the Alta and its companion app provide users with useful feedback to include number of steps, distance, calories burned, and number of active minutes. Another thing is that both UIs even reward users for achieving preset goals and challenges. If the user becomes too sedentary or stays in one place for an extended period, the device will buzz your wrist and give you a little friendly encouragement like, take me for a walk. Much like the issue of the heart rate monitor on the HR, I also read several reports that bring into question the accuracy of the calorie and step counters on today's fitness trackers. While I don't have a fully staffed laboratory at my disposal to put the calorie dispute to the test, I do have a treadmill and decided to conduct my own study to see just how accurate the Alta is at measuring steps. Remember earlier when I mentioned the accuracy of a pedometer depends on where they're worn? Well apparently the same holds true for today's devices and recent studies suggested that on the hip is still the best place for them to be worn. So for my pseudoscientific test, I chose to pit my wrist-worn Alta against my Galaxy Edge placed in my hip pocket. For our measurements, I did a combination of walking and running, alternating between both at quarter mile intervals for a total of one mile. Depending on an individual's stride, which is roughly based on their height, this should amount to approximately 2,000 steps. To ensure I had accurate data to measure, I recorded the entire session on camera. Then, I painstakingly counted each step manually to see how close the results from each device compared to the actual number of steps. These numbers were verified three times and in total there was 1,940 steps. So, what were the final results you ask? Well, surprisingly accurate. Both devices came within four steps of each other. The Galaxy, 
came in at 1,943 steps, and the Alta came in at 1,947, just a mere seven steps off. Why then do the studies claim these devices aren't 100% accurate? Well, for one thing, most of them concluded that today's trackers were found to be more accurate at measuring running over walking, which is why my test alternated between the two. More importantly, however, is that devices like the Fitbit tend to include other body movements into the mix, leading to inaccurate step count at the end of the day. For some people, this is not an issue, as long as their goal is to stay active. But for those specifically trying to measure distances and steps, the resulting numbers can be misleading. After watching this video, some may be wondering if getting a Fitbit is worth all the fuss. Well, the bottom line is, thanks to the interactive features, the benefit of an activity tracker is the psychological effect it has in keeping users motivated to get out and exercise. When I started this evaluation, the Alta was selling for $129 and the HR for $149. Now it's early June and the price in the plain Alta has dropped to just $99.95. With the price difference, my recommendation would be to pass on the HR and go for the standard Alta. If you're like me, go ahead and spring for the better wristband. Nobody will notice and you'll still save money. Well that does it for this episode. If you have any feedback or questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And while you're at it, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can catch more great reviews just like this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.